Occasional illness is a fact of life, and until recently, routine problems were nothing to seriously worry about. However, in the 21st century, the smallest complaint could become a serious concern. Welcome to Watch Mojo News, the weekly series where we break down news stories that might be on your radar. In this installment, we're counting down 10 crucial facts you should know about superbugs and antimicrobial resistance. Number 10. What is a superbug? A superbug is a strain of bacteria that has evolved so that it's resistant to antibiotic drugs. Doctors usually refer to them as multi-drug resistant or MDR bacteria. As such, superbugs pose a hugely significant threat to modern society, which relies upon antibiotics within most aspects of healthcare, illness prevention and surgery. Superbugs are largely the result of humanity's misuse of antibiotics up until this point, and they're more than just a threat. Superbugs are an actual reality, and until they're contained, there's a risk that medical science could experience massive regression because of them. Number 9. How many superbugs are there? It's difficult to put an exact number on the amount of superbugs in existence, largely because that number is always rising. However, though it might be assumed that less developed countries are more at risk, superbugs are a serious problem worldwide. Misuse of antibiotics is common within developed countries as well, although it's proven more difficult to stop the spread in less developed parts of the world. MRSA, or Methylacillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is probably the most well-known superbug at present, as it attacks bones, joints, and major organs. Extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis, or XDR-TB, is also a growing concern, as is a highly evolved strain of the STD gonorrhea and various mutated forms of E. coli bacteria. Number 8. What is antimicrobial resistance? Antimicrobial resistance is the evolutionary stage at which all superbug bacteria exists. Though some organisms are naturally resistant to antibiotics, antimicrobial resistance is usually acquired through biological adaptation. That's why patients are beginning to suffer illnesses that might have been easily treatable in the past, as the antibiotics that were used before are no longer sufficient. Scientists are continually trying to keep pace with the changes in bacteria, but are losing that race at present. Most commentators agree that antimicrobial resistance will get stronger and that from humanity's perspective, it'll get worse before it gets better. Number 7. What causes the resistance? One of the major reasons why antimicrobial resistance has been allowed to thrive is a tendency to misuse antibiotics throughout recent history, including within veterinary practice. By relying upon bacteria-fighting drugs when it isn't necessary to do so, or by failing to complete a recommended dose, patients are only increasing their drug resistance and their susceptibility to superbugs. Doctors are now less inclined to prescribe antibiotics for some conditions because the medication would likely eat up more good bacteria than bad, perhaps strengthening the body in the short term, but weakening it in the long. Number 6. Which countries are most at risk? The rise in antimicrobial resistance is a global problem, but there are areas in which the situation is worse than others. Developing countries tend to record worse superbug statistics in general, and northern parts of Africa are often listed as particularly at risk. However, a 2015 global study found that countries of growing wealth are experiencing the most rapidly increasing rates of resistance, India especially highlighted. For example, in India, there has been an 18% increase in MRSA cases between 2009 and 2014. Another bacteria that can fatally attack the lungs, Klebsiella pneumoniae, was also resistant in 57% of samples tested, despite barely any being so in 2009. Number 5. Have there been outbreaks of popular diseases? Some superbugs are already recognizable to us, but have developed a drug-resistant strain. In September 2015, England found itself in the middle of a national public health alert after an outbreak of supergonorrhea. There is an even more urgent call than usual to practice safe sex, after 15 incurable cases of the sexually transmitted disease were reported in northern parts of the country that year. 
Given that there were around 35,000 cases of gonorrhea reported in England in 2014, that number for super gonorrhea might not seem especially high. However, an alert has been issued because of the ease with which it can and will spread if unchecked. Doctors are concerned that super gonorrhea will become the majority strain, infecting and affecting millions of people in the future. Number 4. Have there been outbreaks of rare diseases? While the spread of sexually transmitted superbugs might follow a predictable course, other conditions on the increase are a little more surprising. Modern-day America is currently dealing with a rise in reported cases of the bubonic plague, an illness usually associated with Europe and the Middle Ages. The disease typically kills 10 to 12 Americans every year, but there was a 2015 spike in sufferers. Every reported case of human plague in the U.S. since 1970 has come out of Middle to Western America, but experts are predicting a slow spread to the east of the country as well, as antibiotics become less effective. Number 3. Are infectious diseases ever dead? The fact that the plague is still present in the U.S., and even more severely on an international scale, is evident that disease is incredibly difficult to truly eradicate. However, there have been two instances in which the eradication of a condition has been certified. In 1979, smallpox became the first disease officially beaten, according to the World Health Organization. Present in human populations since around 10,000 BC, smallpox had killed around 400,000 Europeans annually during the 18th century and had been responsible for about 30% of all blindness. The second infectious disease officially eradicated is rinderpest. A disease mostly affecting cattle and livestock, it was fully wiped out in 2011. Number 2. Have we discovered new infectious diseases? In short, yes we have, or at least we've rediscovered them. As another indirect result of climate change, ancient bacteria is emerging out of the ice thaw, particularly in parts of Siberia and scientists have been able to reanimate it in a petri dish. Prehistoric viruses have been popping up with increasing regularity since the turn of the century, and researchers have been amazed at their genetic complexities, usually far outstripping common modern-day strains such as influenza A. The findings are sometimes dubbed a Frankenvirus, although so far there have been no seriously negative implications out of their discoveries from the permafrost. Number 1. How do we fix this? In terms of everyday practice, it's important to maintain good levels of hygiene, to wash hands thoroughly and regularly, and to maintain cleanliness within hospital environments especially. However, the rise of the superbug is expected to continue regardless. Naturally, drug developers are constantly trying to regain a lead in the race between illness and us, but bacteria will continue to mutate and resist in response. One of the most immediately pressing necessities is the need to systematically report and record antimicrobial resistant outbreaks. Global, in-depth studies are only just emerging, and our grasp of the problem is only just strengthening. It's hoped that a more organized approach will encourage a more efficient effort to stop the superbug. Did these facts get you thinking? To vote for which news story is covered next, head over to watchmojo.com suggest. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more newsworthy top 10s published every week.